Hi, my name is Marius Bock, and today I'm going to present to you our work in progress paper, a public repository to improve replicability and collaboration in deep learning for human activity recognition. The paper was co-written by Lloyd Pallet and Danny Roggen from the University of Sussex, as well as Christoph van Laufen and me from the University of Siegen. Looking back on the past years, one can see that deep learning has become almost the default choice of machine learning approach in sensor-based human activity recognition. However, unreleased, poorly documented, and or not maintained source code, along with missing standards for pre-processing of public data sets proposed architectures were evaluated on, has contributed to a problem of replicability of research outcomes and human activity recognition. In our paper, we propose to address these issues through a central public repository, which can be used to create replicable benchmark scores, while also being a single entry point into the field of deep learning for human activity recognition. Our repository features a standardized data loading and pre-processing pipeline based on easy-to-share YAML configuration files, support of popular human activity recognition deep learning architectures along with an easy drag-and-drop integration process of new models, as well as best practice methods to train and evaluate set models on the pre-processed datasets. We structure our repository making use of the GitHub submodule functionality. With the main repository, the LHR public, containing three submodule repositories namely the data loader, the model, and the analysis submodule. Making use of the submodule functionality of GitHub to organize our repository allows each submodule to be managed and extended individually. In the following, Lloyd is going to give you now a live demo demonstrating functionalities of each submodule and how easy it is to use the repository to train a deep learning model. Hi everyone, I'm Lloyd and as Marius uh, was mentioning, I'm going to give a quick demonstration of how to really quickly get started um, using the repository to um, first using the, the data loader submodule to download and pre-process the data set and then use the model submodule to uh, instantiate and train and evaluate a model, uh, a defined model, which is DeepConvert CM. So I'm going to start by cloning the repository and if you scroll down in the readme for the main page, main GitHub page, you can find the command that we need to run to clone the repository along with the submodules as well. And now opening this up in PyCharm, we can see that it's successfully pulled all of the submodules um, and we have the whole uh, repository cloned here. And it'll take a few minutes to just download and install all the requirements, so I cut that out. Um, but now we'll start by um, using the data loader module to download and pre-process a data set. And in the, uh, in the data loader module, we basically have a folder presets, which has uh, some configuration files which tell the pre-processing code how to, uh, where to get a given data set and how to uh, handle the data, how to load the data and pre-process it into uh, files which can then be read by the, the model submodule for training and evaluating models. Um, and so here we're going to use the opportunity challenge um, preset. So all of these configuration options are explained in the readme in the repository. Um, and basically it's things like the names of the files inside the archive, uh, mappings from the class names to the to the numbers in the in the uh, label in the label column of the data um, and all sorts of things like whether to downsample the data and by what sampling rate. Uh, but yeah, you don't need to worry about this if you just want to download one of the and pre-process one of the data sets that we've already written uh, presets for. So what we're gonna do is um, we're going to run the preprocessing.py script with uh, dash d opportunity uh, challenge, uh, which is the name of the preset, and then input folder data slash raw, so that's where the data will be downloaded to, and then output folder data slash process, so that's where um, the preprocess data will then be saved to. And then you should get an output that looks something like this, which tells you um, what files have been preprocessed where and uh, the dimensionality of the output data. Okay, and it's still going, um, and there we go. Okay, so then uh, now that the data is downloaded and pre-processed, um, I've created this minimal uh, example script, uh, which shows uh, just how few uh, lines of code it takes to instantiate a model, um, load up the data and start to train and evaluate your, your deep learning model. So this is 
um, training the decombolistium model. So in the DLHAR model uh, submodule, we have a, a folder models which contains um, a couple of uh, state-of-the-art models implemented uh, subclassing the space model. Um, and all you need to do to, um, to add a new model to the repository is just create a PyTorch, um, a PyTorch model class uh, exactly the same way as you would create it in PyTorch, but instead of um, subclassing the NN module um, PyTorch class, your subclass base model, which itself uh, inherits from that uh, NN dot module. Uh, and this just adds a couple of extra uh, logging uh, functions, basically, which is used by the analysis submodule. And then once you've done, once you've added your model um, into the models folder, um, you can just drag and drop your, your Python script, which describes a, a valid PyTorch model in there. Um, then you can, you can uh, import that and uh, start training it with the train model function, which is in uh, the model submodule. Um, also, you'll need to define your datasets as sensor datasets. So, the, the, so all we do here is um, we can look at where the process data is saved uh, and just use the, prefe the prefix uh, train to get train.npz and this is saved in the same place where we um, where we told the preprocessing uh, script to save it to. Um, so that's it, we just uh, define our train data set and a validation data set um, with the window size and the stride uh, and then instantiate the model uh, in this case, deep converse CM, tell it how, how many channels and how many classes are in the data set, as well as the name of the data set. That's just used to save the trained weights uh, in a folder called, yeah, uh, log slash opportunity, I think. Um, and then just call train model for how many epochs uh, using those that training and validation data set. And then... Um, and that's what, what I've got running here. So this is running on my CPU, so it's going very slowly, but obviously um, if you have a CUDA-enabled GPU, you can you can run it much, much faster. Yeah, and then once that's finished, uh, we just basically um, create another data set which holds the test data, which have been, would have been produced by the preprocessing script. Um, and then we can run eval model to get the uh, some statistics of that tested, that um, fully trained model tested on the test data set. And then what you'll get once that's finished running uh, is just a very brief uh, summary of the results of the model on the test when applied to the test data set. Um, and you'll have a saved checkpoint of the fully trained uh, model weights. So you can just load that in and um, uh, you can just load that in using PyTorch and then do whatever uh, further analysis that you want. Uh, also, you can use the functionality in the analysis submodule, which I don't have time to go into here, um, but you can have a look at the readme in the uh, GitHub repository for more information about that. Okay, uh, thanks very much, and I'll hand it back over to Marius to um, finish out the talk. Thanks. To demonstrate the capabilities of the repository and how it can be used for collaboration between organizations, we want to now show you our work in progress results on the applicability of grokking in the field of human activity recognition. Grokking is a phenomenon that neural networks can be trained for long periods of time and still learn patterns in the dataset. In general, the common belief is that perfect training results are never a good sign and are a sign of overfitting. In our experiments, we saw a different trend, that in having the right regularization methods in place, one can train neural networks on human activity recognition data for very long stretches while still improving validation performance or at least maintaining it. On the screen you can see our logged work in the progress results on the website Weights and Biases, which is a popular website to track experiments and is integrated into our repository workflow. We used the Opportunity Challenge dataset as input and trained four different settings, each having a different combination of regularization techniques in place, and trained each setting for 300 epochs. Even though the training performance converges to near perfection very quickly and validation loss steadily increases, the validation per score still improves, especially for the case when applying a weighted cross entropy loss and a learning rate schedule. Our plan is to further investigate the settings and using different datasets as input uh, and also applying leaf one subject R cross validation instead of a split validation. All right, so this concludes the presentation. Thank you for your attention. On the screen, you can see a QR code that if you scan it, it takes it directly to the repository. We welcome every researcher to join us in our efforts and encourage you to contribute to our repository, either via a pull request suggesting new features and or by partaking in the discussions of the forums of the repository. Otherwise, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them now. We're happy to answer them. 
Uh, you can also contact us via email. The emails are on the screen. Thank you.